Here's how to play Louie Louie by the Kingsman, or a Louie Louie. Uh, such a cool little riff, and this is often referred to as kind of an open chords, uh, or I've taught this many times in the past, as an open chords kind of strumming song. So the chords would be, and absolutely are, just the A major, D major, and E minor. Um, but what I want to do in this lesson is show you how we can play those chords a little bit higher up the neck without actually barring, so we're not using bar chords, um, just to try and encourage you to play some of the chords that you know in open position higher up the neck to increase your fretboard knowledge, uh, which these little three chord, you know, kind of easy songs um, are really good for, trying to get you up to intermediate level and higher by, again, you're playing higher up the neck. So in case you're not familiar, though, um, so the main riff would be A, 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 D, D, E minor three times, and then D, D twice. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. What we're going to do is use the bar chord shapes, but again, you don't actually have to bar at all. I'm just showing you what this is based on. The A major chord using the E shaped bar chord. A D major chord using the A shaped bar chord. And then an E minor chord using an A minor shape. That's explaining what's happening. If that didn't make total sense to you, it you know it doesn't really matter because all I need you to be able to do is to uh, kind of, this kind of looks like an F major seven chord, but at the fifth, sixth, and seventh fret. So five, six, and seven on string two, three, and four. And you're actually playing an A major chord, but you only want to strum strings two, three, and four. So we're just playing on three strings, and that's our first chord. That is the A, A, A. Then we go to a D, which just needs our fingers um, two, three, and four, all at the seventh fret. Again, just on strings two, three, and four. Tricky bit comes next. We need to swap this to kind of an A minor shape and then back again. So we have A major, D major, E minor, and D major. Compare. A cool thing we can, can do is keep the A string ringing out as kind of what we call a pedal note. So if we keep that ringing out every time that we strum, we just strum the fourth string as well. Adds a little bit of bass where otherwise we don't have that bass. That's an optional extra, but that would enable us to play a little way. Now we do also have a variation of that riff kind of halfway through. just switches from one to the other. So it's an A, A, D, D, E minor, D. And if you can't switch quick enough, but you need to learn the riff, you know, we've got the first riff. Just use it with the open chords. Okay, and that would be the whole song. Uh, the other thing that we have is the intro. That is how to play the little uh, organ part. On guitar, or this is the note that the organ is playing. It's a slide from four to five. A, 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 seventh fret of uh, string four, seventh fret of string two and three, eight and nine, and then back to the seventh fret. However, if you've learnt this, the chords first, played higher up the neck, 
Yeah. You know, we're not really playing a lead line here, we're playing notes from the chord. And that's a really big breakthrough that a lot of people struggle with when they're learning lead guitar. They think it's just walking up and down scales and things like that, and we're not paying enough attention to the chords that are happening underneath, which can really explain why the lead guitarist or the melody chooses the notes that it does. It's just choosing notes from the chords. So definitely, definitely jam along to the original recording and think about how these um, notes relate to the full bar chord itself and how those single notes relate to the, the chord that's happening underneath and try and spot that with other lead lines that you learn because it illuminates a lot of things. Again, it makes, the, why did the person choose that note at that particular time? Yes, because it sounds good, but it can often sound good, especially with notes that we stay on, because that's the note of the underlying chord underneath. Hopefully that's been useful for you guys and a little bit of fun. Uh, check out more of my easy kind of guitar three chord tutorials, but also some of the higher level ones that use higher level chords, but still only two or three chords. I'll leave some links on the screen that should uh, help you guys out with that. I think they're really beneficial. I've had a lot of breakthroughs with students in the past working on this kind of thing. I hope you check out one of those videos and you can do so right now.